Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. We have a huge obsession with making things larger, except people. We have a lot of fat shaming that happens with uh, people of a, a larger body build. I mean, yo mama so fat jokes are some of the most popular jokes on every playground and have been for the last 30 years. But obesity is a problem, especially in America because of the culture of excess that's bred into us. Eat more, do less. That's basically America's new slogan. It was all for one and one for all, but then slavery happened, so we had to change that. Then it was we the people, but we still had slavery, so that was kind of embarrassing. Uh, most recently, it was if you see something, you should say something, but, but that just led to people just pointing things out. Yeah, I mean, I, that, that, was, that was too vague. Uh, there has to be some specificity in what you're saying, right? So now it's eat more, do less, which is getting us one step closer to being a country run by Walmart. Okay, before everybody goes off the rails on this video, I should say that there are genetic components to someone being on the larger side of life. And I went with a pun there because I'm watching my words more carefully than two-thirds of Americans that have the medical condition of obesity watch what they eat. And I'm definitely watching my words more carefully than, a than anybody is watching a capitalistic system that creates this epidemic in our society. Obesity is defined as having an excess amount of fat in one's body. There's a standardized amount of fat that the body needs for insulation, energy storage, shock absorbency, and when people start to accumulate more and more fat, it can cause a lot of mes medical issues like sluggishness and cardiac arrest, diabetes, and in people around you, fat shaming, which then leads to a culture of call-outs of shaming the fat shamers, which leads to like a vicious cycle of anger and uh, aggression and people just yelling at each other on Facebook and leaving comments and emojis all the time. And nobody, nobody is helping the person that's about to eat another fast food burger for lunch and is about to have a heart attack. This is the other side of the food waste problem. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, one in eight Americans go hungry, but two in three Americans are obese because of poverty. And with the price of organic food as high as it is, the only options that these poor people have is fast food, which I doubt can make the claim to be healthy. And, and if they do, it's propaganda, and we should be seeing if they have colluded with the Russians to make sleepier Americans that can't vote. And, and if that is the case, then corporate Democrats and Republicans will be in a real pickle about who to blame for the Trump presidency since they are in the teeny tiny little pockets of the McDonald's pickle. Something else poor people can't afford is time. Working 40 hours a week means that you don't have time to cook all the time. right? According to nutritionist Jessica Shapiro, the Bronx is one of the most unhealthiest neighborhoods in the state of New York, which is more than just this New York City. Because the people in that area don't have access to good food, but they also don't have time to cook food. The Bronx is a, one of America's food deserts, but it, it's okay. The, the government has decided that instead of crack, they're going to drop cacti onto the Bronx, you know, to give them the advantages of a real desert. The organization Jessica Shapiro works for, Montefiore, is working with bodegas in the Bronx to make sure there are some healthy options available for the people. But it's not just enough to make sure that it's healthy, but it also has to be affordable. I mean, remember, these people can't e even afford time, which is something the universe just hands out for free. And through the invention of labor and punch cards, corporations are turning a profit on it. Now, according to Amy Shapiro, a different nutritionist from Manhattan, having frozen and canned foods is a step up from the fast food desert choices that most low-income neighborhoods have, right? And picking a day to cook your food for the week can help make healthier choices. That's to come from adjusting your lifestyle. 
A large issue in all this is the access, knowledge, and options are limited to lower income folks. And the mere fact that the career choice of a nutritionist exists means that there is an issue. An issue that the people want to make healthier choices, but don't know how or, or where to go to make these choices, right? Healthy choices, much like affordable health care in America, is secret knowledge. It's hidden away like the Holy Grail. Education on adjusting one's lifestyle is alleviating just one of those problems. The job of a nutritionist should be more than just telling poor people to adjust their lifestyle, but giving them better lifestyle options in their price bracket. Or they can partner themselves with farmers that have uh, excess of fruits and vegetables that they can't make a profit on and give it away to these low income communities. Let's feed our people first before our livestock. But it is hard for corporations when the lines are blurred and you can't tell the difference between cattle and humans because it's all consumerist livestock. Now, I, I would not be surprised one bit if there if there's a corporation out there that's trying to get cattle to 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 spend money on credit cards how do we how do we get them to how do we get cattle to to do this how do we get them to teach them how to do that that's what we need swipe that card cattle but instead of asking poor people to adjust their lifestyles maybe we can also start asking the culture of consumers to adjust theirs and maybe a, a, a system hell-bent on consumers' gluttony can adjust its lifestyle to a logic-based economy. From deviating our gluttonous vanity and using technology to get food to those who need it, while adjusting to make it better and more egalitarian food choices with the right size portion can lead to a world that's properly fed and create new systems that are actually progressive and efficient instead of ones with apologies as empty as the calories they serve. That's been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and a share. Uh, share it with your friends or your enemies, or anyone that you think would enjoy and benefit from a video like this. Uh, sharing is caring. It's the way that you can help independent media reach new audiences. Uh, Google and YouTube and Facebook are all censoring the reach of independent media like this, so it's up to you, the viewer, and the fans of the show to help this show out by sharing it. That's one way to help the show. Uh, another great way to help the show is by donating to the Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. There you will find all the goals and the rewards that you get by, by being a patron. Um, I'm breaking up Forkful of Noodles, the full 30-minute episodes, into three different parts. Um, but if you donate to the Patreon, you will get early access to the full 30-minute episode uh, before anybody else gets to see it by being a patron. Um, plus, you get uh, exclusive full stand-up comedy sets as well, so you get to see my stand-up comedy material uh, work in progress. Uh, the Patreon website, again, is patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. I've got live stand-up comedy shows coming up in Blacksburg, Virginia, Johnstown, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Columbus, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, I'm going to be coming to Joplin, Missouri, Carbondale, Illinois, uh, and a slew of other dates. Uh, I'll be on tour with Liss Victory for four months in the Transcontinental Tour. And you can see all of my tour dates on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. And while you're there, uh, you can check out all of my stand-up comedy albums uh, from my newest one I put out last year called Approaching Happiness uh, to the very oldest one I have, I think, from like 2011 called Homecoming. You can get the entire breadth on my Bandcamp page at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. 
if you subscribe to it, you get special um, monthly exclusive stand-up comedy material. This includes storytelling shows, uh, crowd work sets. Um, it includes fringe festival sets uh, that don't uh, that you know not everybody gets to see. So that's uh, that's one of the things that are kind of behind a paywall. So that's ramen noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com r a m a n noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com uh, and another way to financially help this show help DIY stand up comedy is by donating to the Patreon at patreon dot com slash krishmohan haha like I mentioned earlier uh, really helps this show because uh, I am the only employee that is uh, on the staff of this show so that means that. Uh, I'm doing all the research, the writing, the rewriting, the editing, the filming, the video editing, and the uploading. So it's like an entire staff's worth of job done by one person. Uh, so if you want to help uh, my endeavors uh, out uh, for this show, my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and DIY uh, comedy touring, and help me get to your city more often, you can donate at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, if you can't donate... Um, sharing is a great way uh, to help this show and help reach new people. Uh, but, you know, if you'd like to donate, if you can donate, have the ability to, you can donate a little, you can donate a lot. It all starts at $2 a month and you get some really cool stuff um, every single week at the Patreon. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, I very, very much appreciate every single person that watches, likes, and shares this content keep doing that that's the, a way that we we build this community up there are more episodes coming every single week so stay tuned and we'll see you on the road